guys? Steve Quell wrote Robert Shrewsbury a letter wanting to know the top 10 thing he knew about giants and the underground cities. And this video is about Robert Shrewsbury's reply and his top 10 things that uh, he'd been studying. And because this is kind of a tribute to Robert, because Robert passed away almost a year ago now here in December coming up, um, and because I knew Robert off and on for over 30 years, some of these things he's talking about, I want to expand on it because he's just listing them here. So I'm going to interrupt this quite a bit and talk about some of the things that Robert's mentioned here in his top 10 list. So with that, here we go. Letter from Steve Quayle to Robert Shrewsbury with Robert's reply concerning his thoughts and knowledge of the Giants. Robert, Please email me a list of 10 of the most important points that you would want people to know about concerning your encounters with giants, underground cities and beings or whatever stands out in your life or encounters. Thanks, Steve. Robert's reply, number one. There are giants that have been seen alive as well as dead all over our country as well as many other countries. I have seen them as mummies, skeletons and even alive and well. Some of my friends have also seen giants as mummies, skeletons, and alive also. So here Robert makes it sound like him and some of his friends have seen some giants still alive. And I'm not talking about basketball players here. I never heard Robert talk about this. Or at least I don't think I did. If he did, man, I must have brushed it off. But I do remember him talking about in the early 1900s how there was still a giant in the Kayabab Forest in Utah, Arizona that would still come around and visit um, one of the Indian tribes there every now and again. But uh, also, um, if you think about it, you know, what about the Kandahar giant that they found still alive, if that story is true? But I do know that Robert believed that there is underground cities of these giants and other people that still live underneath the earth in huge caverns. Although because of streamlined public opinion, many people I know will not discuss seeing giants, but with only a few people because of being scorned and or socially ostracized, embarrassed if not persecuted. Two. It has been my observation, personal empirical research and experience over many years now that there are civilizations of very advanced people technologically that live underneath the crust of the earth, underground cities or UCs all around this planet. Many of them are giants, but not all of them are. Some of them are indeed red-haired and white-skinned, yes, but some of them are also Negro of large stature also. Some of these underground dwellers that are not giants are fully grown at about six feet in heights, whereas others are only about four feet tall when fully grown. Now every now and again I've come across a few old newspaper articles talking about that they found little people and giants in the same, buried in the same area. Well here back in 2015 I got a letter from a guy who claims that he'd found one of these ancient tunnels, one of these ancient tombs. I just want to read bits and pieces about this because I thought it was pretty interesting. I found alcoves or other rooms with crystal coffins or crystal tombs and could see through the crystal lids to the occupants and they looked like they were just sleeping. I found nine of these approximately 12 feet long, four or five feet wide. They were giants dressed in fine fabric. Then he goes on and describes what all he's seen in this room. But then he goes on farther on down in his leather and he says, Another room with little people in it. Mummies by the hundreds. Six or eighteen inches. That's a lot shorter than the four feet Robert's talking about. No coffins, just little mummies. And their tools, which were miniature, small tools scattered the area. Some neatly stored, others in random. I'm talking about chisels and engraving tools, no bigger than my finger. And as I held some of these, I felt like I was the giant. Three. Now the underground peoples, UP, are not immortal, and so they also age and die. And they do not bury their dead in their cities, but in graveyards, sepulchers, and tombs of various types outside and upside of their cities. Some of their tombs are carved like a corkscrew or auger into stone vertically and then turning into a 90 degree angle horizontally. These types of tombs are usually up against a mountain overhang with dirt piled over them and with a round flat rock over the entrance or sometimes cedar wood and then dirt on top of that. The vertical part of this type of tomb is also usually packed with a layer of sand and a layer of clay for many layers. 
The burials that are in tunnels that connect with the UCs are decorated with many artifacts made of precious metals as well as precious jewels, whereas the other burials, like the ones in the cliff overhangs, are usually empty of metallic artifacts or gems. Now, Robert talked about how these underground cities would bury their dead in underground cemeteries away from the cities, and that these burials were adorned with precious metals and jewels. He said that the Spaniards found a few of these tombs and started plundering and robbing all the gold and the precious metals and looking for more of these giant tombs. And he says that that's how the Spaniards got a lot of their gold so quickly. It wasn't mining it. It was that the Indians knew about some of these and they tortured the Indians to find out where some of these tombs were. Then they'd plunder the tombs, melt down the precious metals into bars, and then the rest is history. The tunnel burials that lead to the UCs all have heavy, heavy bronze doors that are closed and locked tight. Apparently so no one can enter their cities unauthorized. In some cases, there is a bronze door at both ends of these burial tunnels. This seems like there is a pecking order, so to speak, where some are buried with a lot of objects and others are buried in the cliff overhang areas, with virtually nothing on their person and outside of the tunnel sepulcher compound. Now, I haven't heard of these bronze doors before, but I have heard of uh, large stone doors. In fact, uh, Dan Lowe talks about in the Henry Mountains, somebody he knows found a giant stone door on stone hinges. But he also said that these stone, this stone door was guarded by a giant snake. Jim Bleich and some of the Indians talk about giant snakes found up in the Uinta Mountains. Later on, Robert will talk about these giant snakes that guard some of these tombs. Four, the Skinwalker Ranch here in Utah, as well as the John Edmonds Place by Buckeye, Arizona area, and many others in Utah, Arizona, the Zone of Silence, Mexico, and beyond. I have personally investigated, and they are all smack dab on top of an underground city. There is always a magnetic vortex at or within a hundred feet of where the strange phenomena occur. I measured these magnetic fields that reaches the surface of the ground of these underground cities. This way I can measure the approximate size of the city and some of them are many miles in diameter, but so far they have always been square measuring on or from the surface of the ground. The magnetic fields that encompass these UCs at or under the ground level is approximately eight times stronger than our regular Earth surface magnetic strength. The vortex is always in the very middle or center of the UCs, and like all of the underground cities, it has a north polarity to our west and a south polarity to our east. This makes them easy to find with a proper dip compass. Detecting downward from the surface of the ground to the top of a UC gives me the depth. However, as I move away from the center and retake the depth, it is always deeper as I move away, detecting in increments at a time until I am finally off of the edge of the city. Finally, I did the rough math on this and calculated that these UCs are somewhere between 52 and 54 degrees, similar to the Egyptian pyramids. But, so far, all of the underground cities, except for dead or abandoned ones, have frequent unidentified flying objects around them. Several years ago, I had a guy contact me and told me a story, and I don't remember exactly how the story went. But it, went, but it was something like this. Somehow this guy ended up in an underground city in Klaus, New Mexico. And there was nobody there. It was abandoned. And it was a bigger, longer story. And I don't remember the whole details. But I was curious about that. I knew that Robert Shrewsbury studied these underground cities. So I asked him if he knew anything of an underground city in Klaus, New Mexico. And he told me that there was an underground city in Klaus, New Mexico, but uh, it was a dead city. And I, well, what do you mean by a dead city? And he said their sun burned out, and so nobody lives there no more. That don't make sense to me that there's a sun under, underground. Maybe it's some kind of ancient technology that gave this place their light, and, and if this is real, that ancient technology burned out, and that city is moved and no longer there. I don't know. Six. It is my opinion that the strange phenomena around the Skinwalker Ranch, John Edmonds Place, Zona del Silencio, Mexico, and others like it, I have personally investigated, are created or produced by these technologically advanced UC people to discourage people from living by or being at the main entrance to their city. Kind of like a stranger sleeping on your doorstep to them. Another possibility is that these people could be making security golems to so protect their cities, I have interviewed many people that encounter very large snakes, 
wolves, and other spooky creatures. In an interview I did with James Mazio, he talks about this exact same things that the ancients had some kind of a technology that guarded these ancient places, these ancient cities, these ancient treasures. And that the deep state shadowy governments knows where these treasures are, they just haven't figured out a way to get past the ancient technology that's guarding them. 7. Besides my own personal experiences, I am really relatively surprised at how many people of the various social levels, class, and even religious people are now finally willing to speak out of what they have seen of the supernatural or unusual. Their opinions, belief, and theories vary a lot depending on their knowledge, experience, and background but they are searching for answers and truths in their own way. It is also amazing how many cowboys, farmers, and ranchers see strange phenomena, such as UFOs and even ancient burials discovered by accident during work on the ranch, water well drilling, or even after a flash flood uncovering ancient remains. It has been my understanding that most farmers' ranchers will hide as much evidence as they can of any burials on their farm, so they will not get involved with the government and all the micromanagement that goes along with this. I think they also realize that the government takes and does not share, so private research, grassroots, is being developed. I sure am glad that private individuals are taking this responsibility. 8. Russell Burroughs, Burroughs Cave, Gordon Smith, Utah, and Earl John Brewer Sr., Utah, all may have broken the law in a severe way by doing their own private excavation of ancient antiquities without an archaeologist, anthropologist, or a permit, and could have all gone to prison for a very long time. I remember back just a few short years ago that a person was going to be imprisoned for trafficking or selling Native American artifacts, and he committed suicide so he would not have to serve time in prison. Now this makes me truly wonder why Russell Burroughs, Gordon Smith, Utah, and Earl John Brewer, Utah, were never prosecuted for what they did as their private excavations of ancient human materials. I suspect that in order to prosecute them, that the evidence would have to prove far too many things that the government wants to keep covered up. A form of silent immunity, so to speak. I am part Amerindian myself, and I do understand why my native relations are offended by people digging up their ancestral graves. Most peoples of all races are offended with people digging their ancestral graves also. However, the Native American Repatriation Act did not only serve my Native American relations, but it also helped the hidden government decree that the people will remain relatively ignorant of the truth of what is underground, and so this has helped them further their own purpose primarily. 9. I suspect that the continuous land grab in Utah over the years making national parks, national monuments, and for endangered species, wilderness, and study areas is a government covert way of keeping people off of the land so that little or nothing underground is discovered anymore. Narawana Tappan, a journalist, a researcher, an explorer, and a truth seeker, once told me that Every time she found something of interest in her research, there was always something stopping her from getting there, whether it was a, a dam built and the area flooded, or it becoming a national park, or uh, whether it was an environmental or, or ecological study area that kept people out. She was always stopped at the interesting places that she found that she wanted to explore and, and research. The amount of gold in some of these burials is staggering. And believe me, the Spanish were continuously exploiting this when they were here until they were run out in 1680 by the indigenous peoples. The Mormon church, early on, fared very well with some of this Utah Spanish gold as they were friends with Chief Walcara of the Ute, and he allowed them to take continuous amounts of gold from a Spanish mine that had smelted gold in it piled in bars stacked for about a mile in length. Early on, the Ute had many stories of the underground cities about the country. Some of this is mentioned in an old book called Indian Joe that I have a copy of. Usually they were referred to as the Seven Sacred Caves by the Ute. Perhaps these are the Seven Cities of Chibola? Ten. I have been in the professional detection business for about 25 years now and have used many types of detection machines and have made a few myself that work better than what was available to purchase. But these better ones are my own inventions and they are proprietary and I have never let out how they work to anyone but I'm also a very good dowser that has done over a 140 blind tests with a lot of success. Sincerely, Robert Shrewsbury. Now, I don't know if there's any truth to any of this or not, or if this is just conspiracy theories, but it's interesting to me. If there's really giants out there, I want to know about it. If there's really an underground city, 
I want to know about it. So if you've researched this, if you've studied this, if you can shed any light on this, leave a comment and let the rest of us know what your thoughts are, what you've researched, and what you've come up with. And then do me a huge favor. Hit the like button. I don't know if it helps me with YouTube or not, but I know it sure makes me feel good. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And with that said, that's a wrap. Uh -huh.